going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. This effort, and China has big plans for this. They intend to seed um, their digital yuan into the global environment by giving it away to visitors at next winter's Olympics. When they arrive at the airport, they're going to get di yuan digital wallets. They're going to receive digital yuan. They're going to use it uh, throughout their visits to Beijing, and then they're going to take it back to their own countries. They see this as a huge advantage. Why? Because who controls the underlying protocols, who un controls the underlying standards of the future of money will control the future of money. Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And guys, you know, I come back with that video just to make you think. And all day, guys, we have been hearing all the China FUD. And we have Scaramucci on CNBC. Speaking on China, and guys, we know there's nothing but the Hegelian dialectic. China banned a lot of American technology, so therefore they can build their own. Remember, they are moving us over into the fourth industrial revolution. We look at the SEC and Coinbase battle. Scaramucci stated that they wanted to ban Uber. Is that correct? No, they didn't want to ban Uber. Uber is for the fourth industrial revolution. But humanity won't be in the picture. You will have a car that drives itself, funds itself, insures itself, puts its own gas in. That's the whole point of the fourth industrial revolution. Humanity is taken out of the picture. But in order to get there, guys, it's problem, reaction, solution with the Hegelian dialectic. Because we know when it comes to the New World Order, it's all planned out. Y'all have a wonderful day. Uber. Bitcoin, self-driving cars, combine those three together and you have the self-owning taxi. A car that is a corporation that owns itself, pays for the car lease, the car insurance, and the gasoline from the revenues it makes, giving passengers a ride, and there's not a single human involved in that matter. This yesterday on the panel that I think central bank digital currencies were concocted in hell by Satan himself. Uh, they are incredible control by governments over everybody's bank account, and they are the, uh, they're going to create a void of privacy for every individual citizen. I think they're horrible, but I think that's where they... Is it new or is it not? I mean, it, it, the, the language is harsher, but hard to make sense of it. Well, listen, it feels like it's the the old news being rehashed, but I think it's a it's a bigger statement from China. They have more crypto activity in China than they would have expected. Three months ago, they pulled all the miners out of there. They effectively banned crypt, uh, cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. Uh, but I think what you're learning is it's in there. It's sort of uh, it's in the system still, Andrew, and they don't like it. And so they're sending out another missive related to it. I don't really think it impacts the fundamentals long term. Uh, the hash rates are back up. The miners have moved out. Uh, we did a little checking this morning on mining rigs. A lot of those are produced in China, uh, and it looks like those rigs are still going to ship to miners that have moved out of China. So uh, the good news is it's more of the same. Uh, but every time China uh, makes a statement like that, it does rock the markets a little bit. Obviously, we think it's a buying opportunity. But I'll just point this out to you, and you know this, Andrew. Uh, when they ban technology, uh, it's a strike against freedom. Uh, and when they did it to Google and they did it to Facebook, those were great buying opportunities for both Google and Facebook. And we suspect that this is a great buying opportunity for Bitcoin here. Uh, bring it back home here for a second. We have, we have a big fight going on, as you saw, between the SEC and Coinbase. Coinbase seems to have backed away from it. 
at least briefly around this interest interest oriented product. How do you see how do you see that those types of products and the regulation around all of this headed at this point? Well, there's a bit of a stalemate. I think that uh, Coinbase is going to win because, as, as, as I pointed out to people, uh, they wanted to shut down Uber. They couldn't shut down Uber because the people wanted Uber. And ultimately, even though the regulators were trying to figure out a way to kill it, they couldn't kill it. And so they accepted it and started regulating. And I think that's going to happen. I think Brian is a very smart guy. He recognizes that he doesn't want to have that fight right now. He's hoping to use moral suasion. He's been to Washington to explain to these people that you don't want to lose the financial services engine of the United States. Uh, we are still uh, the most powerful country as it relates to our financial services sector. Why have a brain drain on crypto and blockchain uh, by overly regulating that system? And so I think Brian is waiting. I think it's a very, very good idea for him. And I think he's going to win this thing uh, frankly, because the people want it, Andrew. And when the people want something, the regulators have a tendency to back off. Let's talk about your... The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come. Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids books. You know, I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis, whether it's your job, whether it's in your community. We have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share, but this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figures. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture we have to re-educate, but let's get into the video. Part one, King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Save the village. Part two, King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Save New York. Long COVID-33. Part three, King Joshua and Grandma Tim goes to China. It's mandatory. To get part one, part two, and part three of this series, it's time to re-educate Generation Z.